Hi there, so today we're going to be making a basic text box system in Game Maker Studio 2. I'm going to preface the video by saying this isn't aimed at the absolute beginner. I'm hoping you have some familiarity with the program, just navigating menus, making sprites and objects, and writing some simple code like movement. That said, I'm going to be explaining everything as I go, so hopefully it won't be too tricky if you're relatively new. So right here is the finished product. Um, it's got basic movement, just the player objects, uh, so that we can walk up to the NPCs, which are just the yellow and blue squares. And if we hit space, we have a text box appear. So both NPCs have their own unique dialogue and multiple pages of text. So the names are displayed in the center there, and we have got the text spelling out one character at a time. So I've broken up the tutorial into two parts. By the end of this video, we'll have a working system, but it's going to be more simplified than what we have here. In the next video, we'll expand on it and add the things like the border outline and the multiple pages of text. Uh, we'll also have a skip function uh, and the spelling out we'll also do in the next video. So we've got lots to get done, let's get to it. All right, so before we start, I'm just gonna change one of the settings. I'm going to increase the room speed to 60. All right, and we're gonna start off really simple. I just wanna make an object, we're gonna call it OBJ text box. And I just wanted to draw a basic text box and some text to the screen. So we're going to come to the draw event, which just handles all of the drawing. And draw a text box and the text. So for my text box, I'm going to be making a sprite. And you might have a different sprite for your box, that's fine. It can have pretty borders, it can be big or small, it doesn't matter. We're going to accommodate for any size but I'm just gonna make mine a nice, boring black box. Just make sure that the origin is in the top left corner. All right, so let's come back into the object. Now we're gonna draw this sprite. So we're gonna use the function draw. And as you can see, you've got lots of options here. You can draw circles, buttons, health bars, but we wanna draw sprites. And we have to give it a few arguments. So we have to give it a sprite, a sub image, which is just the frame that we want to draw and a location to draw it. So we want to draw for a box. The sub image, our frame is just frame one, which actually the sub images start at zero. So we're gonna put zero. And we just want to draw it wherever the text box is, which is just this X and Y location. And we also want to draw some text also at the X and Y, which will just make it up the top left corner of the box. And we're gonna give it a string. But instead of going and typing a string here, which is just indicated by these quotation marks, I'm gonna set this equal to a variable. And so now whatever I set text equal to, it will draw that string. And you can put whatever you want here, but just make it kind of long so that we can test this properly. So I'm just gonna make this up. All right, so now come into the room. And I'm just gonna change the background because I don't want it to be black because my text box is black. So I'm just gonna make this maybe a nice green. All right, and we're gonna drag in the text box and we're gonna have a look at what that will do. So there we go, perfect. We've got a nice text box drawing and our string. But as you can see, it's gone way past the width of the box. But what we would like to do is wrap it here and then start on the next line. And before we do that, actually, let's also use our own custom font. So let's come over to the fonts, create a new one. I'm gonna call this FNT text. And I'm just gonna make mine consolus. And we're going to set the font here, draw set. So now, whenever I use text from now on, it's going to be in this font. All right, and now let's fix our wrapping problem. So instead of using just draw text, I'm gonna use a slightly different extended function, ext. And it's gonna basically take care of that wrapping problem for us. We just have to give it a couple more arguments. So we have to give it sep and w. And so now, if you don't know what that means, just middle click on this, it'll bring up the documentation. So the separation is basically just the distance between the lines of text, which just means 
how much further below the first line do you want the next line to be? And the W is just how far along on that box do you want to make your text before I wrap it to the next line? And so that will just be the width of the box. So mine is 400, yours might be 300, 500, doesn't matter. We're just going to get whatever the width of this sprite is using another function. And we're going to do this in the create event because I only need to do this once. And we can actually move this to the create event too. So we're going to call it box width. And it's equal to sprite gets the width of spur box. And for the separation, uh, I'm going to want it to be about the height of our string in pixels. So again, we can use a function to get this. Text. And text is just, remember, just whatever this is set to. So now we can input this into our draw text extended function, string height and box width. So now it should be wrapping the text for us. Perfect. All right, so now it's wrapping the text properly. So now I just want to explain what we're going to be doing with this text box. Um, so in a game, you'll probably want this dialogue system to be for NPCs or notes that you find and every time you read one of these notes, you want a text box to appear. So every time you go out to an NPC and hit space or something, we want to create an instance of OBJ text box. So the NPCs aren't actually drawing the text themselves, they're getting one of these to do it. So let's go ahead and make a player object. And we're just gonna add some basic movement so that I can go up to someone. And I'm just going to also add a, a function. I'm going to, when I click my mouse, I'm going to just create an instance of the text box. So you don't have to do this. This is really just so I can show you a couple things. So that just means we're going to be creating an instance of the text box at a certain layer. So if we come back to the room, there is an instance layer here, but I don't want it to create the text box in the instance layer. That's where all my uh, NPCs and players and all of those are going to be. I want to create a text layer and I want this to be on top of all of the instances. I always want the text to draw on top of the instances. All right. So, and I want it to appear at wherever the mouse X and mouse Y is. The layer I want to give it is text. And I want to create a text box. Good. I'm also just going to create an NPC. You can call this whatever you want. And we'll create a couple sprites for them. Mine are just going to be some boring boxes. But you can be more creative if you like. Doesn't really matter where you center the origin. And one for season two. And I might just make her, let's see, nice blue color. Okay, back to the player. So we'll set the sprite, uh, set Susan's as well. We'll drag them into the room. I'm gonna get rid of this OBJ text box here. We don't need that anymore. Drag in the player and drag in Susan. So now I should just be able to move and create text boxes wherever I click. There we go. And click and make some text boxes, good. All right. So now when I collide with Susan, I want Susan to create her text box. So let's go into Susan, go into the step event, which is just called every frame. And we're going to check for a collision. So we're going to be checking at her, her bounding box, and the collision check is going to be with the player. And again, we just want to make an instance of the box, of, of the text box. At her location in the text layer, OBJ text box. All right, now let's test that. All right, good. So when we collide with her, she makes the text box. So now you probably can't tell, but she's actually making a lot of text boxes whenever I'm colliding with her. As long as I'm colliding with her, she keeps making text boxes because that, that's all that has to be true for us to keep making them. But I only want her to make one 
I want her to have that one text box. So we need to check here. Basically, if I haven't already created my text box, make one. So I'm going to set a variable and it's going to be called my text box. And it's going to be known at the start, but after I've created it, I want to set my text box equal to that instance of the text box. So we can literally just put my text box equals to this, whatever this is creating, because this function actually returns the unique ID of whatever instance it's creating, just like a little barcode. So every single instance gets its own, uh, its own unique ID and we can save it in here when we create it. So just to prove this, I'm just going to draw what this is equal to. You don't have to do this, this is just to show you. All right, so you see right here, so currently my text box is equal to minus four and that's just Game Maker's way of saying no one, right? And so when I collide with Susan, we're hoping that it's going to set my text box to something else. So you see how it keeps going up? This is because she keeps making a lot of text boxes. So it keeps saving the new one into this variable. So we need to do a check here. If my text box is equal to no one, right? That means we haven't created one and we haven't saved its unique ID. And then I also want to do, if I'm not colliding anymore, I want to go and delete my text box. So instance destroy. And now I could do obj text box, but that would destroy all of the text boxes, but I only want to destroy just her one. So again, I can just use the unique ID. All right. Let's give that a go. Actually, we also have to put if my text box so is not equal to no one, which means it is equal to something, which means it exists. That's just a, bit, a way to say that it, if it exists. All right, that's right. All right, so it's set to no one right now. We collide, it's set to its own unique ID, and when we move away, it destroys it. So that's perfect. So now the only problem is that if we go and collide again, she doesn't make a new one, right? And that is because of this. We said you can only make one if my text box is equal to no one. But after we create it the first time, it saved the unique ID of that one. And we haven't reset it back to no one. So just when we destroy it, we also have to put my text box back to no one. And we'll try that again. There we go. And it's a new one every time, see? All right, so now I want Susan to have her own unique text. I don't want her to be printing whatever we put here in the text box, right? So I don't want her to say this. I want her to say, hello, I'm Susan. So she has to basically change the text variable of her text box, because that is what is gonna be drawn in by the OBJ text box. So from Susan, we have to modify this. So let's go back into Susan. Uh, and you might be tempted to just put text equals, hello, I'm Susan. But this text variable isn't Susan's, right? It belongs to OBJ text box. So we have to basically say, not my text variable, but obj text boxes, and not just any obj text box. I wanna change just her one, so I'm gonna put my text box dot text. So this text belongs to my text box, whatever instance that we created. So that should only set her one to be hello, I'm Susan. So just to prove that, I'll just make a couple other ones, and hopefully hers will only change her text box. There we go, works perfectly. All right, so we're gonna stop there. We have a basic system up and running. Uh, this is probably fine if, as far as basic systems go, but we'll expand on it and add a bit more complexity in the next video. I'll see you then.